Hey everybody, Luke Gordon here. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you about uh, the tricky part with getting rid of horizontal canal vertigo, uh, BPPV. I get a lot of questions online from people about why is it so difficult to diagnose and treat horizontal canal vertigo? And I've been thinking about this all week and I just wanted to get it out so everyone could uh, could watch it. So forgive me for doing my first ever like selfie video on YouTube, but I just had to get this out so you guys could watch it. So again, it's tricky to diagnose horizontal canal vertigo more so than uh, the more common type, which is the posterior canal vertigo, um, which is a little easier because it's just a positive test on either side. So I got a bunch of notes I'm going to go through and just tell you why it's tricky and then how to interpret kind of the tricky aspects of it, which will then help you uh, get an accurate diagnosis of the horizontal canal vertigo and then also dive into treatment. Because really until you know exactly what you're dealing with, you can't go on to the repositioning maneuvers like the Gafani. So the tricky part about it, in my mind, the trickiest part that gets people thrown off track is that when you're doing the supine roll test, which I won't go into on this video, but I've got videos on that too, when you're going into the test and you're rolling your head from side to side, um, with horizontal canal, because of the orientation of the canals, the test is going to be positive on both sides, meaning that when, we, when you roll to the right and you're looking for nystagmus in your eyes, that kind of side to side eye uh, beating motion, you're going to have it on both sides. So you roll to your right side and your eyes are beating to the side. And then you roll to your left side and they're also beating to the side. And that's what I think what really challenges people is like, well, does that mean that both eyes are positive? And the answer is typically no. What it means is that um, when you roll to one side, the first thing I want to tell you for uh, unraveling this trick is that you need to interpret the diagnosis based on which side is more intense. Um, so let's say you roll to your right side and your eyes are really beating hard to the side and it's really nauseating and you feel horrible. And then you roll to the left side and your eyes are less intense. They're not beating quite so hard and you still feel a little icky, but not as bad. So you're going to interpret that as the right side. So you're going to go to the right side because it's more intense. So that's the first trick is which side is more intense. Start there. The next trick though, of course, is that your eyes now can be beating towards the ground or away from the ground. And again, I'll go into more of these details and videos that I already have, which I'll link at the end, but just stick with me for now to interpret how this kind of trick works. So again, you've established, let's say uh, in this example, that on the right side, you're more intense. And if your eyes are beating towards the ground, then that means, and this is the fast phase, sorry, let me back up. This is the fast phase. So the fast phase means that your eyes are going boom, 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 boom. The fast phase is what you're diagnosing on, okay? So again, let's stick with our example. You're on the right side and your fast face is beating down towards the ground, which we call geotropic. Um, if that, in that scenario, with the diagnosis now, it's the same side. So if you're on your right side and it's beating down towards the ground, the involved ear is the same side ear, which is your right ear. And when it's beating down towards the ground, it means you have a right ear canalithiasis, okay? I've got a video that will explain much more what, that'll, what that actually means and how to interpret that and treat that. But that's, start there, write that down. Um, if that's what you have, right side, you're on your right side or your left side, whatever, but the more intense side and it's beating down towards the ground, it's the same side. That's your diagnosis, right-sided canalithiasis, okay? In the same example, let's say the right side is still more intense for you, but the fast phase now is beating away from the ground, which we call ageotropic. Essentially, it's beating towards your left ear, well, now what you have is for your diagnosis, it's the opposite side. So you're laying on your right side, but your eyes are beating away from the ground towards the left. It's your left ear that is positive, inner ear. It's your left ear that's positive, and it's cupulolithiasis. Again, I've got a video that will explain this in way more detail, but I just wanted to let you know this is the tricky part with it, is that just getting the diagnosis right is the tricky part. So that's why I want to make this video. So the diagnosis is the tricky part. A couple of the tips I wanted to make though. Um, with this type of vertigo versus posterior canal, which posterior canal is much more common, you'll do the Dix Hall Pike test instead of the supine roll test. You'll do, um, uh, excuse me, you'll do the Epley maneuver um, instead of the Gafani maneuver. Um, but with horizontal canal nystagmus, keep in mind that the nystagmus, the beating of your eyes side to side, can be much longer lasting and it can be much more nauseating. So just keep that in mind, another fun trick to, to throw your way. So I wanted you to keep that in mind. Um, and then one of the tips that I have that I think is really helpful is that if you're just not sure, what I would say is, because again, it gets tricky, um, 
what I would say is take a video or have you know your spouse or a loved one or your brother or sister or whoever, take a video of your eyes in both positions. And then that way, if you end up getting help for your vertigo, say you're going to a PT or an ENT and your, your nose and throat doctor, you can take that video just in case your symptoms have changed or they're not as intense that day for whatever reason, or, or they put you on like, um, let's say a motion sickness pill, medication like that, uh, anti-nausea pill, uh, take the video um, and then send it to your PT, send it to your ENT, um, and then they can use that to help you get treatment and diagnosis. Um, so I think that's a great idea. Uh, lastly, before I go, um, if you've had experience with this and you have a story you can share, hopefully a good story that involves successful treatment, please share it below in the comment section because I'm finding um, lately that people are really, they want to hear your story. They want to see, okay, well, what was it like for you? How long did you have the vertigo? Uh, what was the treatment and diagnosis like? Did it work? If you can share your story with somebody else, that'd be really powerful. So please leave a comment before you go. And then I'm also going to link those two videos that I've been mentioning. One is much more in-depth on how you diagnose horizontal canal vertigo, and the other one is much more in-depth of how you're going to then pick the appropriate uh, treatment procedures with the Gafani. So I hope this video helps. Uh, please leave a comment, of course, for me too. I'd love to hear that. And I uh, hope it helps. Keep watching more videos. Keep leaving more comments. I appreciate everything. Have a good day.